All right, y'all, we just went live on Facebook, coast to coast and around the world. Y'all ready to sing? Yeah. Let's all stand. Victory in Jesus. Here we go.
say it if you can. <laughs> good stuff. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you this morning. Welcome to our 11 o'clock worship service. We're glad that you are all here with us this morning. Uh, and I tell you, 9 o'clock <coughs> service was a blessing. Brother Jeff, uh, he just led us in worshiping our great and almighty God. And if you can't already tell, he can play a piano. Man, he, can, he doesn't knock the dust out of this one, so it's good and clean inside. But uh, he's going to do a special for us in this service in just a little bit. Uh, so we're glad that he's with us today. We are doing a love offering for him, so if you have something you'd like to give to his ministry, there's a plate on the table out there, and it has a sign above it that says love offering. That's the plate you would put that in. The other, the basket is for our church. Take your Bibles as we do our Sunday morning reading together in Psalm 119. Today we'll be reading verses 105 through 112. Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112. While you're turning there, I just want to mention to you that I will be taking water up to the uh, field house at the high school today at 3 o'clock, somewhere between 3 and 5. So if you brought some water uh, to donate to our middle school and high school athletes, uh, we can put it in my car. It's out there in the parking lot. i got uh, several cases of water in my car ready to take up there from our church. So I appreciate everybody who's uh, given that to help out our athletes in our middle and high school. Also, uh, we need to remember when we pray this morning, all those on our prayer list, of course, uh, Jolie and Larry, uh, Angie Cozy. Good to see Brother Gary back in church today after his hip surgery, amen? So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, good to see uh, those who have been uh, in quarantine, <laughs> amen, <laughs> back in church today too as well, so thank God for that. We do have some other people in our church who are in quarantine. They don't have it, but they're in quarantine today, so they couldn't be here in church, and they really hated it and had to miss this this morning, but uh, they had to do that, so... I pray for all those people who are impacted and, and uh, affected by this virus, this pandemic that's still lingering on in our nation, and pray for uh, God to move on people's hearts and lives through this. I tell you, people need to get their eyes on to Jesus Christ, amen, that's right. and focus on the Lord. Uh, and we need to pray for our nation, pray for our government, pray for our president, pray for this election that's coming up. Remember all of our military, too, our veterans around the world, pray for them. Uh, also remember Wayne Smith's family. Uh, pray for that family too this morning uh, as they're grieving that loss. So you pray for pray for all them and others too that you may have on your heart and mind. All right, let's hear from God's word uh, this morning. I'm not preaching today after Brother Jeff does his uh, special this morning. Brother Ashley, our youth minister, is going to be bringing the word today. So pray for Ashley that God would anoint him to preach the word to us this morning. All right, let's hear from the word of God this morning. Psalm 119, verse 105, beginning there. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the freewill offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this opportunity again to assemble together in this place. And we come in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to bow before your holy presence and recognize that you are the one true and living God. That you are holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Father, we're grateful for the love that you show us every day and the faithfulness that you have toward us. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Your compassions never fail. And we give you praise with thanksgiving this morning for that. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior and our Redeemer and our King. Thank you for the love that you show us, Lord, and coming into this world and the life that you live and the death that you died on Calvary's cross to take our place, to bear our sins and our iniquities on your body. Thank you, Jesus, for your penal substitutionary death and for satisfying God's justice and appeasing His wrath over our sins. Thank you for your resurrection from the dead and the power and authority you have over all things in heaven and earth. We're grateful that you are our advocate and we're grateful for the promise and the hope we have in your soon coming. Father, help us to be found faithful when you come. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be ready and help us to keep our eyes, our focus, our affections on you in this life. 
Father, we pray that you continue to bless us in this service time and help us, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless Brother Jeff as he sings and plays again this morning. God, anoint him and with your spirit. And God, we pray for Brother Ashley as he come to preach. I ask that you would empty him of himself and fill him with the Holy Spirit and anoint him, God, with the unction to preach the word to us. God, help us to be attentive to your word with understanding and a desire to walk in obedience to what you say. I pray for all those who are watching by Facebook this morning or who may watch this video later, that, God, you would help them to hear from you today as well, that you would minister to them and bless them by your spirit, encourage them, equip your people. And, God, the sinner's soul, we pray that you would break their hearts over their sins with godly sorrow that would lead them to repentance and faith in you today, Jesus. Have your way. Be with those who are sick and hurting today in our church family. We lift them to you, asking for you to touch them and strengthen them, Father. Bless them, Father, today. God, we pray for those who are grieving, especially for uh, Mr. Wayne Smith's family. We pray that you be with them today and just comfort them and help them today, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would be with Brother A.T. Sears. He's having surgery this week. I pray that you would watch over him and bless the doctors as they do that surgery. Everything go well. Be with all those in our church family who have been, uh, been affected by this COVID-19 virus. We pray for each one that you would strengthen and guard them. Help us, O oh Lord, to be safe from this virus, I pray. And God, I pray that you would work in this community and work in this county. That God, people would turn to you and trust in you. And you would protect us, O oh Lord, from this, we pray. Have your way. Bless our government to trust in you, Lord. Help this election, God. And I pray that your will will be done in that, Father. We pray that you would be with our military around this world, wherever they are. We pray you keep them safe out of harm's way. We thank you for that. We love you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Hey. Well, I don't know how I'm going to follow up after that. I appreciate it. Man, that was good. Turn, if you will, in Hebrews. Turn in God's holy word to Hebrews chapter 10. It's going to be difficult on that one. Follow that one up. Man. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 25 is where we'll be uh, looking at this morning. I want to thank Brother Fitz for asking me to preach. It's always a, a pleasure and a joy for me to be able to uh, look into God's Word and preach God's Word uh, and, and just uh, be under the mentorship of this church and, uh, and just giving me the opportunity. There's a lot of, a lot of churches out there that uh, aren't mentoring young men and growing them uh, as they should be. Hebrews chapter 10, so I, I thank you, Brother Fitz for this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25, I will, if you are able to, to stand as we read God's holy uh, word. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 25. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our water, uh, confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let's pray. Almighty God, Lord, what a blessing and honor and we lift your name on high today to be able to be in your house this morning. This day that you have made for us to worship you. Lord, I thank you for the music, and the power, yes. Lord, that, uh, that, that just, oof. Lord, just say, uh, the music that was played, Lord, but man, I can't imagine how it's going to be when we're all sitting around the throne of God praising Him. Lord, we thank you, but Lord, we, we're going to praise you because of who you are. Yes. And Lord, what your Son did for us. Lord, I pray, Lord, at this time that you would manifest yourself here in this place. Lord, we want to hear you. Just a whisper would satisfy your children today. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to have your word and preach your word and teach your word and declare your word. Lord, be with us this morning. Open our hearts and our minds. Lord, even in the darkest, deepest corners of our heart, that your light would shine through the hearing and preaching and teaching of your word this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would empty me of myself, but, Lord, that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. Speak through me, Lord. I, I pray, Lord, that you would use me as your vessel this morning to draw sinners to your Son and, Lord, to equip the saints to go out to this lost and dying world to preach the gospel, the only saving message, our only hope yes. in this dying world. Lead us and guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. The church in America is facing difficult times. 
Times that the church has not experienced in America for several years. The church has had to stop in-person worship, social distance ourselves, and worship in a different way. The church has had to essentially find alternate means in order to continue to worship during this COVID pandemic. The church has made great strides to accommodate Sunday and Wednesday uh, worship, utilizing the internet to broadcast or, or television. Uh, yes, this is a, great, a, a, is a great step at expanding the gospel to the world in which we have been commanded to do. Jesus himself instructed us to go out into the world Amen. to share the gospel. You find that in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But however, with great technical achievements often come with negative impacts. A trend that I fear today's church will see is that people will rather worship from home and forsake the local church in the name of convenience. Mm -hmm. Data already coming from, and I don't, yeah, I don't look at polls too much, but already data from, data from Pew Research states that since the COVID pandemic, four out of 10, four out of 10 people have already replaced, said that they were gonna replace going to a local church and just worship from home. Wow. Now I can tell you, I, uh, when we uh, had our, uh, you know, services online, we weren't able to meet here uh, as we were following the guidelines that uh, Governor Kemp asked us to follow. We're to be obedient to that uh, as God has, has uh, commanded us to do. Uh, I enjoyed it in the aspect of I could just watch church in my pajamas. <laughs> but it was a longing. I, I, ha I had a longing to be in the house of the Lord, a longing to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ. How in the world can I just say, I'm just going to stop going to the local church and just worship from home? But four out of ten people have made that choice. And many people are saying, why not worship from home? What's, what's wrong with that? What are the issues with watching my pastor on the television or on the computer or laptop? Well, I'm not going to, uh, I'm just going to answer that question. Because God instituted the local church for the bride of Christ to worship his son, Jesus Christ, together. That is the purpose of the local church. Revelation, many of you said, well, uh, Brother Fitz is not preaching this Sunday, so we're not going to be in Revelation. Well, um, Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 says, Then came one of the seven angels, and I'm sure Brother Fitz will... Uh, uh, will uh, go into this more detail as he gets there, uh, Lord willing. But he had seven angels who had the seven bowls of the seven last plagues and spoke to me saying, spoke to John saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And this morning I want us to look at the local church and understand the importance of the local church. In order for us to, to help, in order for you to help and to help myself remember the importance of the church, uh, of the local church, I put together an acronym. And the first one, and the acronym is WIFE. In my job uh, on base, uh, we, deal, we talk in acronyms uh, uh, all the time. And uh, a new person comes in, they're saying, what kind of language are you talking about? But an acronym I put together to help us this morning. And it's WIFE. W stands for worship. I stands for instruction, F stands for fellowship, and E stands for evangelism. And let's look at the first point, if you will. Look at uh, verse 19 through 22. The, my first point is the local church was created to worship its Lord and Savior, King Jesus. Look at verse 19. Therefore, and I'm stopping. Therefore, that one word, I, Brother Fitz, I got hung up on this word. Why? Because I love transition. The, the, the Bible is full of it. Uh, and, and that transition, and, and what it is, is a, uh, uh, the writer of Hebrews, we don't know who wrote uh, Hebrews, uh, so I'm not even going to debate that, but it doesn't matter because we know, but all of us know that it was given and it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it says, therefore... This writer here in Hebrews in chapter 10 is, is making his argument just as a lawyer makes his argument in the court. 
And, and this writer is, 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 is talking to the Hebrew, the Jewish Christians, uh, about Christ's sacrifice once for all. It was Christ that, and through his sacrifice, it was completed. No more sacrifices were needed to, to, to keep back the wrath of God. Amen. And the writer here says, Therefore, as he's making his argument, he gets to this point, he says, uh, Therefore, uh, I want us to look at this transition statement. Therefore, brothers. You see, the Jewish church, and you have to go back and go all the way back to Hebrews chapter 1 to get the context here. It, it follows up. You just can't pick scripture out, brothers and sisters in Christ. You've got to go back, and you've got to go forward to get the entire picture. You see, uh, the, the Jewish Christians were, were continuing to offer sacrifices once a year. And, and what had happened is uh, the uh, Jewish Christians had started uh, putting their, uh, their, their faith into their works, into this annual sacrifice that was, was taking place. And, and that's what the writer here comes. He's saying, hey, it's, quit putting your faith in this. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone. It was not the sacrifices that were continued to be made by men once a year at the temple. This sacrifice made once a year was for a reminder of their sins against God. And that a debt was to be paid. Acts chapter 10 verses 1 and 3, if you will, turn there if you want. Acts chapter 10 verses 1 and 3. For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities... It can never. By the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. There we already see the local church, a, a part of the local church, coming together to offer a sacrifice in remembrance of what Christ did. Doesn't that sound familiar? Something that we do. And we do it here at this church once a quarter. It's the Lord's Supper. And continuing on in Acts, uh, otherwise would they not cease to be offered? No more sacrifice needed. Since the worshipers, having once been cleaned, would no longer have any consciousness of sin. But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. Right. So that was the purpose and this is why the, the Hebrew writer here, uh, the writer in Hebrews here, uh, was, was making his case is that these men, like I said earlier, the, 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 the church was putting all of their faith in the works of man. They had it wrong. And we too should be reminded of our sins and the punishment that Christ took because it's important. That's the gospel. And the punishment that Christ took on our behalf because of our sins, this remembrance only enriches our understanding of a true what true worship is and who we should worship. There are two places in God's Word that we see the instructions of the Lord's Supper and how the Lord's Supper is to be completed in remembrance of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 25, Brother Fitz. Uh, before we participate in the Lord's Supper. He oftentimes goes back and reads this scripture. But in Luke chapter 22, verse 19, I, I wanted to get directly from Jesus himself. Look, if you will, in Luke chapter 22, verse 19 and 20, he gives the instructions on the Lord's Supper. Jesus speaking to his disciples, and he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Not of man, you see. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And church, we don't we do not worship because of man, but we worship because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. 
You see, it was King Jesus that paid the price that we could no longer pay. It was King Jesus that bore our sins upon his body. It was King Jesus that took the wrath of God because of our sins. Amen. It was King Jesus that was nailed to the cross. It was King Jesus that shed his blood yes. for us to be made right in the eyes of a righteous God. Amen. It was King Jesus that conquered death, shouting, It is finished in a declaration. It is King Jesus that was raised from the grave and is living today. Praise the Lord. It is King Jesus that said, I am going to away for a while to prepare you a place in the kingdom of God. It is King Jesus that is coming back for his bride. Are you ready? I didn't hear nothing. What is worship? The works of Christ defines our faith. And that is what we are to worship. Christ is our worship. Not man. Moving on. Therefore, brother, since we have confidence. And, and my first point is where I'm going to spend majority of my time because it's about Christ. Since we have confidence, you see, brothers and sisters in Christ, or, or those of you that can hear, if you do not understand, and, and those of you that uh, don't understand the penalty that was put on the wrath of God, that was uh, put on His Son, Jesus Christ, for our sins, if you can't understand that, you'll never have confidence. You'll never have the boldness, as, as the New King James Version says, to be able to worship. It is confidence, it is boldness. Yeah. In the word of God. It is confidence. It is boldness. In knowing what Christ did for you. Amen. Confidence here used. Therefore brothers. Since we have confidence. Confidence uh, is used in the ESV version. And in the New King James Version. It is boldness. Both words mean the same thing in the Greek. And this same word however. Is used to describe the confidence or boldness. That Peter and John had. When speaking to the Jewish rulers and elders and scribes about Christ. Turn, if you will, to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. This is the boldness and confidence that uh, John and Peter had in speaking about Christ. Now, when they saw, they being the, the rulers, the scribes, and the elders, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were what? uneducated common men they were astonished and they had recognized that they had been with Jesus yeah Woo. amen that's the confidence you see Peter and John had the confidence why because they had been with Jesus right. they had seen what Jesus had done they understood that Jesus died on the cross for our sins a debt that we can no longer pay, that we can be found righteous in the eyes of God. Amen. Brothers, well, it's time to shout. It's Amen. time to get excited about Jesus Christ. Right. You can't do it from home. <laughs> you can get excited at home, yes. But it's better to be in the local church. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we too have been called by God. You, you say, uh, I can't get that excited, Mr. Ashley, or uh, Brother Ashley. Why can't you? God called you just like he called Peter and John. Well, I haven't experienced Jesus. You experienced the Holy Spirit. And I know I'm not used to video. We too should have the same confidence that Peter and John, the, or boldness that Peter and John had, and people should see it. Mm -hmm. The world should see it. The Jewish Christians have forsaken the confidence they once had in Christ, but moved to a man-centered confidence through the sacrifices being made in the temple. And church, I'm afraid today's church... Uh, it, today's church is worshiping man versus Savior. The church's confidence is in the pastor or the youth minister or the deacons or the elders of the church. They're not confident and they're not bold 
and what Christ has done for them. This was not God's design plan for our worship. It wasn't. Our worship is for Christ. We should want to worship. Go back in Revelation. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be worshiping at the feet of Christ. That's right. Amen. That's right. Then why don't we do it here today? Yeah. Let's get a little practice in. That's right. We don't just show up to a football game with no practice, do we? Brother, you didn't just come to the piano and start playing, did you? You had to practice. Our boldness, our confidence must be in Christ, in Christ alone. The church's worship belongs in the confidence of King Jesus. Why? Because that is what our faith is in. Our blessed hope. Church, where is your confidence? Is it in man or Christ? Those of you that are on video, where's your confidence? Is it in man? Or is it in Christ and Christ alone? To have boldness and confidence. Why do we need boldness and why do we need to have confidence? Thank you for asking. To enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. Continuing on, look in Hebrews, sorry, Hebrews uh, chapter 10 back. To enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. By the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. The, the local church's worship must reflect in order to enter God's holy presence, you must come through the only way that God has provided through the works of Christ. Any Amen. other way is useless. That's right. And I'm going to show you, God hates it. Yeah. It is only through Christ and Christ alone. Our worship is in Christ and Christ alone. Through the works of Christ and our faith in Christ, only that, then can we have confidence to enter the holy places. Now, what is this holy places? This holy places here, the writer is referring back to the earthly tabernacle that was built. You see, the Jewish Christians, if you go back, there's a lot of talk, and in, 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 in the writer here in Hebrews is going back to the Levitical priesthood days. Uh, so if you want to go back and, uh, and, and, and learn about the tabernacle and the sacrifices and the altars, Brother Fitz uh, expounded upon uh, the tabernacle. And they're on CDs. Go back there and we'll be glad. I'm sure we'll, we'll be glad to give those out to you so that you can understand uh, the, the tabernacle and its purpose, which was all to reflect back to Christ. Right. But the writer here is referring back to the earthly tabernacle that was built by Moses from instructions given by God. Mm -hmm. You see, Moses just didn't say, I'm going to build this church. That's right. God instructed him. And gave him every last measurement, every last thing that Moses needed to build that tabernacle. Amen. So how can how, how do how can we come into the house of the Lord as part of a local church and think we can just worship how we want to? Come in our own way. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Sure. How can we? How, how can we do this? Go back to Leviticus chapter ten. Before we go there, let me finish up. The holy places are defined in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Uh, for Christ has entered not into the holy places made with hands. So you, you take this and you see that the writer of Hebrews, he's making his argument. And he's talking now to the Christian Jews. He's saying, uh, now the holy places is not about the tabernacle. I'm not talking about the earthly tabernacle. I'm talking about where Jesus Christ is right now. He is seated at the right hand throne of God. This is the heavenly places. This is the holy places. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things. You see, it wasn't that uh, Moses built this tabernacle just to, to show God's 
how great he is. Yeah, it, God is great. And if you look at the tabernacle, everything was, had its purpose because God wanted it that way. Because that's worship. God wanted to be worshipped in the right way. Okay? And, 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 and moving on is, uh, but it was the exact copy of what is going to be in the holy places where Jesus is today. Which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. You see, it's Jesus Christ, our faith that we have in Jesus Christ, that we now can enter into these holy places. It is the, the blood of Christ that was shed for our sins. It was when he was, uh, his flesh was torn and ripped open that we now have the access to enter into the holy places, not by man. Right. Not by man and what he thinks is right. In order to be in the presence of God, we must be found righteous in the eyes of God. This can only be done by the blood of Jesus Christ. Any other way is doomed for destructions. Turn with me to Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 and 3. Uh, you can read there, but uh, I, just in a matter of time, time's sake here, uh, we see Nadab and Abihu. How they thought, hey, I can just worship God how I want to worship God. In the name of convenience. You know what? Uh, God specifically told them, you are to get fire from here. You're to get so and so. But Nadab and Abihu said, you know what? I'm just going to get some, uh, some fire that I, I, I think is okay. That, that man thinks is okay. And so they uh, using unauthorized fire as part of their worship. Representing man's own work, which is not the way given by God ended up in Nadab and Abihu being consumed immediately. Why? Because they didn't worship the way God instructed them to the worship. That's right. God has given us clear instructions on how the local church, church is to worship. Number one, through Christ and Christ alone. Number two, we have boldness and confidence in whom Jesus Christ and Christ alone. That when we come and that we uh, are, are, are part of the local church and, 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 and we're gathered together as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are to worship Jesus Christ and Christ alone. I'm going to say this repeatedly. Because church, I think we've gotten away from that. Maybe not this church, but other churches have gotten away from worshiping the one true God. Instead, it's nothing but political. It's all about Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi. You know what? They ain't Jesus. So who cares? You know what? One day, we all know they're going to die one day. I mean, it's, it's, it's evident. Man told me, old man, wise man, told me one day there's two things, actually, you're going to do. Number one, you're going to pay taxes, and the other one, you're going to die. Unless Jesus comes direction but why don't we worship the living God why don't we worship the one that has has made us a way to come into the holy places why don't we worship the the, the one that was raised from the grave and is living today and since we have a great priest over the house of God because of the works of Christ, he has been appointed by the Father to, Father to be the great high priest. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 says, Now the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest. One who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty. Amen. Man. Capital M. Majesty, by the way. In heaven. A minister in the holy places in the true tent. This is good. That the Lord set up. Yep. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Whatever words I want to say. Thank you that I don't have to depend on man. Amen. To praise set up God. that tent. Yes. Aren't you excited? 
Aren't you excited? Because let me tell you something, man's going to fail you. Let me tell you something, man's going to disappoint you. But Jesus Christ isn't. He saved you. He kept you. He's cleaning you. And one day you're going to worship at His feet. And you're going to want to. So church, let's start right now and let's worship. Let our worship as a local church, as a body of believers, we worship Christ and Christ alone. Let us draw near. And so our great priest is whom? Jesus Christ. Why? Because of the, the debt that he paid, the penalty, the price that we could not pay. Let us draw near with a true heart. You see, our faith, we, we have to be, it goes back to this boldness and confidence. You know, if, if your heart ain't all in it, then don't try it. I'm just giving you some advice. If your heart ain't all in it, don't even try. But our, our, our heart, uh, as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, our heart, and we have to have a true heart in the full assurance of faith. Mm -hmm. I, I can't go away from the scripture. It says it right there. Let us draw near. The church, the local church, is to draw near with a true heart. In full assurance of what? Faith. <clears throat> With our hearts sprinkled clean. Now, going back, again, the writer uh, here in Hebrews is going back to the Levitical priesthood days where they would sprinkle the blood from an animal that would remove the evil consciousness, that would, that would clean us. And our bodies washed with pure water. I said a lot in order to give you the definition of what true worship is. And here it is. In three really quick sentences. The definition of the local church's worship. And, and let me say, I, I, I failed to mention this earlier. Worship is just not singing. This is worship. Yeah. Our offerings are worship. Our prayers are worship. The definition of the local church's worship is this. True heart and full assurance of faith. Which is our faith in Jesus Christ. Where's your faith? Church, where's your faith? Is it on Christ or man? And let me tell you this. I'm going to go off in a little rabbit hole. Just for a quick 30 seconds. Church, I'm going to give you, and churches, it, 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 you, you can experiment with this if, if y'all want to. Let your pastor leave for one Sunday and see who shows up. That's your true worshipers, the ones that show up. Why? Because they're following man. Well, if the pastor's not here, he won't know I didn't come. <laughs> I never truly understood that till I started preaching. And that's when God took me to the woodshed. I was following man and not Christ. Second point of the definition of local church's worship is the first one is our faith in Jesus Christ. Second one here found in this verse, our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. Our faith is in Christ and Christ alone. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ that saves, that cleanses us and watches us. And when God sees us, whew, He sees us as holy Amen. and righteous Amen. and an heir. Praise the Lord. I don't deserve it. Nope. I wake up in the mornings and I say, God, why you put up with me? God, why? Why I didn't do it? Because he loves me. Amen. He loved me so much that he sent his one and only son, Thank Jesus you. Christ, to die on the cross Amen. and shed his blood so that when Jesus, when God sees me, he says, well done, my son. Yeah. And it's not because of what I did. I'm going to point right back and I'm going to say, it's because you're son. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Second point, our hearts are sprinkled clean from an evil conscience through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are clean. That's the second part of worship. Is That's what our faith is in. Third one is our bodies washed with pure water. This here, the writer here and the theologians expounded upon this. This is all of them concluded and agreed that this was referencing baptism as a way of showing the washing of sins. But let me tell you something. Baptism doesn't save you. It is only Christ that saves you. But what does baptism represent? New life. You know, before I knew Christ as my personal Savior, let to stop. No, He's my Lord and Savior. Yeah. Let's get that right, church. Because we've kind of left that Lord piece out because we don't like to be under the authority. Uh, that's not an American thing anymore. We don't like to be under the authority uh, of someone. Okay? But I'm going I'm to challenge the church today. I want you to go and I want you to look at God's Word on the authority uh, and those that have authority over you. All the way from the White House is Brother. Uh, oh, our missionary goes to Mexico. Tom Brother Tom, all the way from the White House to the church house, yeah. and even into your house. Who has authority at your house? Read it. I ain't got time to go through it. But this, this, the third point of our worship is that we have a new life. That's why we come together to celebrate, to sing, to worship, to, to preach the gospel, which gives people new life through Christ. God instituted before the foundation of now, this is a, God instituted before the foundation of the world. Even before we were even created, God said, "I want church." Even before the foundations of the world, He, he created church. Whom he created for what? His son. Who would be to, who the local church would be to worship. Why? Because Jesus Christ was the complete and last sacrifice. Cleansing them, cleansing the sinner. Making them righteous in the eyes of God. Only by the works of King Jesus. Who right now is seated, sitting at the right hand of throne of God making intercession for us the local church's only worship should reflect the only way that he has provided our worship is in Christ in Christ alone our second point under worship is instructions the local church is to use God's instructions look at verse 23 if you will Therefore, brothers, I'm going to read 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, this is the instruction in verse 23. Let us hold fast. The confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. You see, the local, the local church is to use God's instruction. Anything outside of God's instruction, which is God's holy word, is useless. Right. We don't need another added book. Right. We don't need a bunch of changes in this book. Right. It is eternal. It is everlasting. It does not uh, change. God does not change, so His Word is not going to change. Right. It is the absolute truth. Well, we need a different program. No, you need to get back in the Word of God. Well, we need we need a uh, 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 we need a uh, uh, we need another uh, youth ministry. No, we need to get back in the Word of God. And. Through that program, if you want to continue with your program, preach the word of God. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. Uh, hold fast the confession of our hope. You see, God designed the local church to use His holy word in our daily lives. God's word should be used to, number one, God's word should be used to, number one, point people to Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, Paul here is writing to 
uh, Timothy. He says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. Not in the name of Apollos. Not in the name of uh, Brother John. Not in the name. He says, I charge you in the name of God and of Christ. So you know what's coming. Preach the word of Christ. Preach the word of God. Which will point back to Christ. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing and in his kingdom preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort or to encourage with complete patience and teaching. <clears throat> to expound upon this uh, just a little bit. Church, I don't know where we get the idea that we come to church to hear, to hear a feel-good message. Oh, don't get me wrong. The gospel of Jesus Christ definitely makes should make you feel good. Yeah. But I want to tell you something. There's more than just a feel-good gospel. Right. Understand what Christ had to do. That don't make you feel good. Yeah. Somebody says... Oh man, that preacher, he, he preached a good message, man. I, I feel, man, I feel good. I'm, I'm good. I, 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 go, I, I can live my life how I want to live. I, I'm good as long as I'm tithing, as long as I'm, as long as I'm praying like I'm supposed to. I, I can feel good about myself. Ooh, don't buy that lie. We went to the G3 conference, and one of the speakers there said that if you go away from church feeling good about yourself, you went for the wrong reason. Because it's not about you. That's right. It's about Christ. Amen. So when we preach the word, we have to, church, local church, we have to be ready at all times to preach the word. In season, out of season, in order to reprove or to rebuke. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I, I long for a church. And I long for churches and, and, and brothers and sisters in Christ and, and, and the local church to, to, to reprove and to rebuke. On Wednesday nights, where Brother Fitz is going through the book of Jude and, and how these false uh, teachers are, 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 are just coming into the church. And, and Jude has the boldness and the confidence to come out and call them out. But we do these things in love, though. With complete patience and teaching. That's the love part. Number two, uh, how do we use God, the, God's design for the local church is to use His holy word in our daily lives. Number two, to give the Christian and local church a promise. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 through 25, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable. It's a promise through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass and all of its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower fails, but the word of the Lord remains forever. Amen. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. When we come together as a body of a local church to hear the preaching and the teaching and the worship and, our, and singing of hymns and, and our prayers, it should be in the Word of God. Yes, that's right. Because that's the only blessed promise we have. Why? Because it points to Jesus Christ. Amen. If you don't already know Christ, then you don't know what the local church is about. In church, if those of you that are in church and think you know Christ or some of this is hindering you a little bit, do you know Christ? And the third point of what God's word, how it's to be used in the local church, is to show the Christian and local church how to be the light of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13a says, By their approval of this service, Paul here writing to the church of Corinth, of course. They will, I want to go back, by their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ. 
We're to be the light of Christ. Amen. When people see us, they should say, man, there's something different about it. There's something. Because the world's not going to know. Those outside of Christ ain't going to know. They, they're just going to say, something's different. But when they come to know Christ, they'll know. They'll know the light. Church, what are we instructing? What are we teaching? What are your instructions that guide you daily? Are you growing in the word of the Lord? Are you growing in the word of the Lord? Do you see any growth? Are you professing the gospel of Jesus Christ through the word of God? Let me tell you this. What a tragedy it is for the local church to throw away the only saving message. What, what a tragedy that is. <clears throat> so we see the second point of what the local church is to do. First one was to worship. Worship Jesus Christ as, uh, as he is due. The second point is instruction. And our instruction, and, and, and I wanted to, to go through this, but uh, real quickly, let us hold fast the confession, the word of God. We should hold fast on to it, just as the bull rider rides for eight seconds. He's holding on for dear life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we too should hold on to what God's word. Hold fast the confession of... Uh, Of our hope without wavering. God's word doesn't waver. Therefore we should not waver. Amen. For he who promised is faithful. Where is that promise? Where is the promise that we can see? It is in Christ through God's word. Amen. That's where we find our faith. Next one is the local churches to fellowship. Look at verse 24. <clears> through <throat> 25. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. So now we get to the point where we see the Hebrew, the, the writer of Hebrews is seeing a problem within the church. Is that these people were forsaking to meet together, to assemble together, or he wouldn't have wrote that, as is the habit of some. So they were forsaking, neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some. So he sees this. He sees that the, the local church is coming together, uh, and, and he wants to, to clear it up. He wants to rebuke it, yeah. as the, for the uh, previous point we were to do. God designed the local church to meet together, to follow fellowship as a body of believers. Why, do, why is it necessary for us? Why is it uh, necessary for us to, to come together to worship Christ and in Christ alone? Thank you for asking. To love. And I'm not going to expand on these, but we come together to love. Second one is for good works. Not that that's going to get us anything, but that it shows the light of Christ. We went through the flickering lamps Bible study several months ago. It was probably in winter time. Been a while. Been a while. <laughs> and time flies. Last year. Last year. Yeah. Time flies. And the question that impacted me the most in that Bible in that book study was this. If the church was to close its doors today, would the community know? The local community. Would they be impacted? That's the purpose of the local church. To worship Christ. To give instruction. To love on one another. Well, we need it. Yeah. Our good works. What is the good works? Whatever you want to do it. But I'm going to tell you that what we should be doing as a good work is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not neglecting to meet together. Now I know 
I struggled with this. I know we're in a pandemic. I get it. But I'm just going to say this. For my own personal, what I went through, and I said it earlier. When I wasn't able to come and be with my brothers and sisters in Christ for those weeks that we had, I was sorry. It was a, it, I missed it. Yeah. I longed to be in the house of God. Amen. Yep. So those of you that are using COVID as a excuse, repent. Because if you know Christ, you should long to be in the house of the Lord. Don't let the devil rock you to sleep. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you, you know, it's just safer if you just stay away. Because <coughs> guess what? Habits, that's how habits are started. The local church is critical for fellow Christians to be held accountable in the love of Christ, to encourage one another, to mentor and to grow new believers in becoming teachers and preachers of the faith, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Church, I, I will ask you this. This is a tough question. How many preachers? I will ask you on Facebook as well. Examine your church, your local church. How many preachers have we grown? How many preachers have we mentored and, 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 and guided them? How many missionaries? How many missionaries has the church guided and mentored? That's the purpose of the local church, is in our fellowship Number one, that we are held accountable so that we can encourage each other and to mentor and grow new believers. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, Jesus here clearly gives the church instructions on coming together and growing the faith. Acts chapter 1 verses 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Not witness. Witnesses describes the local church. Because if it was just one person, it'd be witness. In Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Church, are we participating in fellowship that is Christ centered in building the kingdom of God? Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some. Last point <clears throat> is that the local church is to evangelize or evangelism. Verse 25b. But encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. God designed the local church to be an encouragement to fellow believers and unbelievers. Now look at this verse. It says, but encouraging one another and all the more. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let me ask you a question. <coughs> we getting, are we getting closer to when Jesus is coming yes, back? Yes, we are. That's what this verse is talking about. Look at it. It says, all the more as you see the day drawing near. Yeah. That should put us on fire, brothers and sisters of Christ Church, the local church. We should be going out and preaching the gospel. Why? Because Jesus is on his way. That's right. Amen. We don't know. We don't know when he's coming back. But we understand, uh, Brother Fitz uh, clearly uh, through his teachings has, has showed us there's no more things that have to take place in order before Christ comes. He could come tonight. As Brother Fitz said on Wednesday night. He could come tomorrow. Is it encouraging?
having our faith in Christ should encourage us to go out and shout the gospel of Jesus Christ on the rooftops. Yeah. When we sit down for dinner, we should be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone. Amen. When we go to work, we should share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the day is coming. Amen. Amen. Yes. And oh, 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 how sad it would be to know that you had a relative, a mama or a daddy, or a grandmama or a granddaddy, having to face the wrath of God. Because that's what they'll face without Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. As is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more. The church is to go out and, it should be on fire to go out and share the gospel. I went over my allotted time ending worship. The local church was designed before the foundation of the world to worship King Jesus, who was the ultimate sacrifice for sinners. It is only through the work of Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood, that we may be found righteous. Not only righteous, but that through the work of Jesus Christ, whom we should worship, we may be heirs, sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. The church should not boast in what man does but should worship at the throne of King Jesus. Church, who are you worshiping today? The local church should hold fast to the instruction, that blessed gift that God has given us, which is His Holy Word. And our confession of hope, because that's what our hope is in, is in Christ through the Scriptures. That points us to Christ. That we do not waver, but that we stand on the promise of God. That our voices would sing the praises of his word. That our preaching and teaching would only be on the rock of Jesus Christ, who is our blessed hope. The bride of Christ should meditate. We should. Uh, the bride of Christ should. Uh, we should meditate that uh, the word, uh, the word of God, uh, and study the eternal words of God that sanctifies us into the image of Christ. It is only God's word that molds us and makes us and sanctifies us. Church, what instruction is most important to you? The local church is made to, by God to fellowship with people of the same mind. Church, do you long for fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you long for the day where we come to worship together in the same place to lift our voices in praise for what Christ has done? As the day draws near, are you looking forward to it? The local church's main commandment is to encourage, to exhort. Encourage and exhort through the gospel of Jesus Christ. People with the only saving message, the only message that can save. Church, hardest question that I had to ask when doing this study, what does our evangelism look like? Churches online, what does your evangelism look like? How many missionaries, how many preachers, how many teachers are coming from your church? How many young men and women are we mentoring in the church and encouraging, encouraging them through the word of God, of the word of Christ? Church, what does the wife of Christ look like today? If the groom who is Jesus Christ was to come right now, would he be <coughs> proud to see his bride? <clears throat> Examine your hearts today. Examine your hearts. Have you found any sin in your life? If we're not worshiping like God has commanded us to worship, repent. Seeking forgiveness Amen. and repentance Amen. of this sin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, the Lord, that, the day that you have made. Lord, I thank you for the word that you have so blessed 
we've given us. Lord, I know the word was long and hard today. Lord, I'm glad that we heard your whisper today through your word. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would be with those that are on the prayer list, those that that need your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Lord. Say, Lord, I, I, I beg, Lord, that you would just put a burden in their heart, a thirst that cannot be quenched until they come to know your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray in all these things that your will will be done in every life that's here and that can hear us on the internet. Have your way. We love you. We praise your holy name today because that is why we worship. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ashley. Appreciate the word. Amen. 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 God bless y'all. Listen, we love you here at our church family. And those of you watching on Facebook, we want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you more than we could ever love you. He did everything that's possible that needs to be done for you to be able to have eternal life. You see, Jesus, when he came and went to the cross, he did not go for himself. He went for us. He laid down his life and shed his blood so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have that entrance into the holy place, into the Father's presence. He substituted himself there for us. (coughs) He put himself in our place so that he could take the wrath, the judgment of God for us. So we could be saved from his wrath. You know, we often, and I've mentioned this in sermons, Ashley has too. You ask people a question, what are you saved from? And people think about, well, I was saved from lying or I was saved from stealing. I was saved from adultery. I was saved from drinking or all these kind of things. No, we're saved from the wrath of God. That's what we must be saved from is the wrath and judgment of God. Think about that. Is your faith today, are you trusting in Christ and Christ alone? For your salvation. Those of you watching Facebook, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Are you following Him in your life? Is there daily walk in repentance whereby we recognize our weakness in the flesh and our sins and we come and confess those to the Lord as He shows them to us in our lives? I encourage you, it's important to know that because that day is approaching quickly that Christ is coming. And I I want you to be ready. I want you to know Christ. I want you to know that when that time comes, whether it's Christ coming to rapture the church, or it's whether it's your time to die, that you're going to be with the Lord, that you're going to know Him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I encourage you, church, to be that light in this world, as Ashley was talking about. It's our responsibility to be the light in the darkness that we live in, around this, in this world, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, if you discovered a cure for cancer, and I'm not talking about to put somebody in remission for six months or a year, I'm talking about to cure them completely. Would you not go and scream it <coughs> from the housetops? Would you not go and share that? Hey, I've discovered the cure for cancer. Of course we would. But let me tell you, we got the greatest message this world's ever been given. Yeah. The cure for sin. The cure for death. And the escape from God's judgment. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I encourage my brothers and sisters and myself... When we have those opportunities in this life, let's share the gospel with people. They need to hear about Jesus Christ. That's really loving them when you do that. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you all for being here. Don't forget, Wednesday tonight. We will have a Bible study at 7 o'clock. We're getting close to the end of Jude, and I hope to encourage you to be with us. If you can, it'll be on Facebook Live. You can watch that, too. Uh, next Sunday morning, we'll be back at 9 and 11 in our services uh, next week. Hopefully, first Sunday in October, we're going to be able to start back with Sunday school and our regular worship time and Sunday night service and all that stuff. That's what I'm shooting for, so I'm praying, be praying about that, okay? Um, let's stand.